So while I'm here, I thought I might do a little couple videos on Lynchburg, Virginia. But if you look down in there, that's the tennis courts. This is Peaksview Park. Just a, a little history was uh, my dad, he, uh, he was kind of a brilliant in ways and really, <laughs> really not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he reminds me a bit of President Trump in that, uh, you know, he surrounded himself with brilliant people and uh, they got federal funds to build this whole park. You know, there's the soccer field out there and it's huge. And we'll get some video of this. Uh, I'm just kind of gonna roam around and show you just Peaksview Park. Uh, and then he's got a plaque in here dedicated to him. Nobody probably remembers who he was. Uh, in fact, when I went to the recreation department, I was trying to get his name on uh, uh, Heinz Drive there. And, but not Heinz Drive, yeah, that's Michigan. Anyway, talk to you. So in the park here, they have a huge Frisbee golf course that, man, I'd say it, it goes all over the park. It's, it's, uh, and there's always people playing. See these guys down here? There's four of them, they're, they're playing Frisbee golf. So it's really, really popular here in Lynchburg. Uh, I never got into it myself, but uh, anyway, if you, if you ever visit Lynchburg, just come to Peaksview Park if you're a Frisbee golfer and you'd really fun, have fun. It goes up into them woods over there uh and all the way around the park so it's a nice course so throughout the park there's all kinds of picnic shelters and you know here's another person playing frisbee golf and you can see they put a lot of money into this little bridges that, that take you around the course and uh, it's cut in here here's a and then they got benches you know you can see that back there where people can sit and uh we're going to get a view of the baseball fields um i think there's six in here and uh, just beautiful, really. This was my father's crowning achievement. And uh, you can see they're, they're playing over here. And uh, it's funny because Lynchburg's still under lockdown. And uh, you don't see no social distancing there. Uh, <laughs> so I guess the, uh, the governor, uh, the Democratic governor, is not over here uh, monitoring the baseball fields. Um, but uh, the, the restaurants and the small business owners, they can't work. But uh, hey, at least people can play baseball. So, and you got a field here, and then the, get the guys playing right there with this kid. A lot of use in this park. So, we'll continue on. So, I don't want to get too close because I'm trying to keep people's faces out of the video. But there's some guys back here playing uh, flag football, and you see all the people just kind of hanging out and enjoying the day. It's a beautiful day. Uh, kind of back there, I'm, I'm going to talk about those bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> in a minute because I have my own stories to tell about this part. So here's a little different angle. Now my dad, I, he'd be real proud. A lot of people using what he created. Him and his staff, I guess I should say. It certainly wasn't just him. And uh, swinging around here. And there's, the, there's the bathrooms. We're getting ready to go in there. I got to talk about that. So my dad used his influence to get me a job uh, for a couple of summers working in this park. And of course, he made sure it was the worst job possible. <laughs> so part of my job was cleaning these doggone bathrooms. And uh, I'm gonna tell you, you know, the men's room here, it's not looking too bad, but you can kind of see that uh, what I'd have to do back then was I would just bring a hose in here and I'd hose the whole thing down. But uh, I don't know if any, how many of you have cleaned bathrooms for a living. There's more of the Frisbee course right there and uh, just get the view around here while I'm talking. But uh, I'm gonna tell you, the women, <laughs> the women are much, much, much worse than men. Cleaning out their bathroom, I w can't even begin to describe the disgusting stuff that I would find in there. You know, there's just tampons on the floor and, and uh, crap on the toilet seats, and uh, it is just disgusting. But uh, and I don't know how the heck they even used the bathroom when it was like that. But uh, let's, let's just keep going. I'm not trying to gross y'all out, but I'm just telling you, it was a rough, rough job. And then, of course, Clyde, we'll, we'll just swing on around here. Clyde, uh, he, he rode the mowers. You know, when you're an old timer in the park service, you, you get the easy job and you put the young guy on the weed eater and have them cleaning the bathrooms and pulling out the garbage. You know, stuff you'd find in the garbage cans was disgusting, too. And then, uh, and then I would weed eat along those banks. But one, one tree up here, had poison ivy on it. I didn't know it was poison ivy. Clyde, he set me up. And I went up there with, he said, beat that stuff off that tree. He says, I don't want to leave it on that tree. I said, okay. 
So I beat it off and man, oh man, I had the worst case of poison ivy you can ever imagine. I mean, my whole body just broke out. I'm surprised it didn't get into my lungs. And uh, so Clyde uh, took me to the hospital and uh, they gave me a shot in my in my rear end there <laughs> and uh, it cleared it right up i was i was shocked i mean and what was really cool about the whole thing if you you know once you've lived through it was i never never had a problem with uh poison ivy ever again after that i guess maybe my body kind of developed some sort of immunity now i wouldn't want to roll around in a patch of poison ivy to test that theory but you can see the park's got just tremendous use they also got a little uh, course that i'm going to be doing where you can get exercise and stretch and you know I, I love these courses and i wish we had had some in florida anyway i'm sure we do i just haven't found them so this is some of the course uh now i just wanted to show you they they renovated those basketball courts probably a couple years ago because i was here walking you know when i come visit my my mom i, I go for long haul hikes and this park is pretty good hike in uh you know the one thing my dad didn't accomplish you see all that land back behind the basketball course and the baseball field there he tried to put a golf course he's going to put a, a nine hole course in there and he never he never got it past the city council and uh you know in hindsight now that people aren't playing golf that much it's probably a good thing because there's mountain bike trails cut all through there and they're really really nice and so it's nice to go up in them woods and, and hike through there so i'm i hate to say it, i'm kind of glad he didn't get the golf course and i know he was really disappointed but it all worked out you know, let's keep going. So one thing Clyde <laughs> wasn't real bright on, I just wanted to show you the, the, the creek flows right through here. I think that's Ivy Creek. And uh, so he had me cut down all of this stuff and I'm glad to see over the years it's grown back up because he wanted people to be able to see the water and get down to the water. Well, of course, you, when, it, when we get big storms, it would just wash those creek banks out completely. And, you know, I kept thinking, you know, this is probably not a good idea for me to be beating down everything to the creek. I mean, obviously we left the trees, but none of this was here when I used to work here. And uh, you can just see this. There's, there's a whole lot of weed eating to do in this park. So I just thought I'd give you a brief history of, of what Clyde was having me do back then. Man, I, oh, I forgot to tell you what was fun was especially right back in there and on the other side over there was the kids all knew me and they would say Kirk, Kirk, Kirk and they'd all come running and uh, they, I'd, you know, grab them and I'd wrestle with them, you know, and I'd toss them around and uh, and Clyde would come out every time and rescue me, you know, and say, you're not here to play with the damn kids, Kirk. You're here to, to do your work now. Let them kids be and get on to work. But, but I thought it was pretty cool. I got to know them all and uh, I usually would play with them maybe five minutes or so. And they, now in today's age, I guess they would get all upset about that, you know, but I, the kids loved it and I had a good time, you know. Nobody ever got hurt, thank God. I guess if they, if they had, I wouldn't have been subject to a lawsuit or something, but back then it was a different age. You know, you could, you could do stuff like that. And uh, it was nice to put that weed eater down occasionally and, uh, and just do something besides that. So, there's a lot more to see. I don't want to take too much video here. There's more of the creek. So I want to film this station because a little story behind it. You know, in the Marine Corps, I used to get on them pull-up bars right there. And, uh, man, I'd throw up the pull-ups. I could do 30, 40, 50. I don't even remember how many I could do. Now, for my exercise, I get there, my feet get on the ground, and I pull as hard as I can. <laughs> and I can't get my feet off the ground. And then I'll do my leg raises right there. And, no, I will not be filming that for you to see. and uh, But I did want you to see this bridge. It's pretty amazing. Let's get down here. This is another baseball field on this side of the park. But uh, there's more of the creek as we go over it. They're beautiful, huh? So, and then here's the other side. And then we're coming up on the baseball field. Now, if there's any hunters <laughs> that are watching this video, if you could get permission from Virginia to come down here and hunt deer, in the evenings, I usually see about 50 deer in here. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. They'll be in these fields and everything. So I got to cut off because I'm passing somebody. I don't want to get them in the video. Now, before the virus, you would never just see an empty field here. There'd be soccer being played out there. But uh, if you're a hunter, this is where you want to set up. I've never failed to see deer in that field in the evenings. And, uh, you, you know, you've got a good clear field of vision to take you down a, a deer. And that they are quite a nuisance here in Lynchburg because they do have laws against uh, 
you know, hunting, you have to get special permits and whatnot. And I think, I don't know, I haven't heard anything about anybody that's ever gotten one. So, but anyway, let's just keep on going. Here's kind of some of the path. Isn't this beautiful? I mean, it's just real treasure for the city. I'm glad my dad was able to accomplish this for the city of Lynchburg. It's too bad that nobody will ever know his hand and his staff that made all this possible. Now we're gonna get a picture. He's got a plaque on a post uh, dedicated to him about the park. Uh, nobody ever sees it, it's at the bottom of a pole. <laughs> I mean, boy, let's honor the man and put it as a little plaque, but we'll get a picture of it and, uh, and I'll put that up in the video. So here's kind of the first bike path and uh, I tried to do it back when years ago. And even back then it was tough. Uh, there are sections, of course, there's easy, Hard, you know, maybe I'll take my bike and try to do some of the easy sections, but I wanted you to see the map of the park here. Just kind of show you. Let's see, let's get it just right. I'm gonna to try to hold that as still as I can. I didn't bring my my stand, so I can't do any selfies or anything, but that's kind of the park. Hopefully you're getting it uh, in view there. So, okay. Let's do another scenery, quick video here. See the squirrel up there? There he is. Isn't that beautiful? That's just a normal trail here in Lynchburg. No, I, I do. I don't like being in Lynchburg, but I do love the park system. And uh, so that's just pretty cool. Now here's a tip to cities and states everywhere. Nobody's using this. Why are you cutting this grass? Let this grow in naturally and come up closer to the path so you're not out here in the sunlight and wasting all that gas to cut grass that nobody's ever going to use. I mean. Nobody ever hikes down in there or does anything. And this is true all along the trail. Now, you're gonna to wanna to cut out a little area like right there, but you don't need to cut all that grass. That's just a waste of time and money. And as things get tight in these city budgets, you know, I mean, I understand gas is a little bit cheap right now, but that's just stupidity at its best. Now look right here, isn't that beautiful? With all the flowers that have grown up close to the path where they're not cutting. You could do that with the rest of this and plant some doggone trees in here and make it look really nice. You see now this is what I'm talking about. When you cut too close to the riverbank, you're gonna get erosion like this and that's what Clyde would have me do and I see they're still doing it. I mean, they are letting it grow up better, but you'd be better off just letting this all grow in and just cut a little, little bit right here. A lot of people here today, so. But I just wanted to show you that. And anybody watching, and look on the other side. Here's a happy homeowner just cutting everything down. So when you get a big storm coming through, that whole bank's just going to wash right out. It's terrible. People just don't, they don't think. Here, look over here. You know, he's cutting down really close to the bank. Let that grow in natural, man. It's that much less work you got to do. So I know I keep harping on this, but look at this. Now that's going to turn your, your grass equipment into a muddy mess. And when you get back, you're going to waste a whole bunch of water spraying off the lawnmowers for no freaking reason. Just let that grow in natural. You ain't gotta be cutting this. And you don't see, look, those people aren't running down there and they're not running through the mud, are they? I, I just don't get it. And this is another little thing. Look at this. Hey, why is that there? I mean, I guess for lawnmower to turn around? <laughs> I don't know. I just always, you know, see stuff like that. And I'm like, why in the world did they put, you know, that little inlet right there? There's no trail. Okay, bye. All right, he's turned around. I can take the video now. Look at all that grass. How much is the city of Lynchburg spending? to cut all this grass all the way down to there. Now look, there it is grown in to the trail. I think there's a little creek that goes there. You could just let that grow in all the way along here. That's a lot of gas and a lot of wear and tear on them mowers. For what? Nobody's using that. I want to get a picture of this. This is the bike trail system. I mean, you can see it's pretty extensive for, for mountain biking. Now to get back in here, it's kind of a muddy mess. So, you know, you got to wait for the dry season to really be mountain biking these trails, but that don't stop a lot of people. Yeah, one nice thing about this park too, is you have a little bench down there where you can sit and rest. You know, we're just about done with the paved trail and I'm going to give you some stories when I get back on another trail that I'm going to hike. All right, it's story time. We're coming up to the end of the paved section of the trail. Now, you really can't see through the leaves, but if this was winter time, my house is probably right there, just on the other side of that creek. 
Now, and I say my, my mom's house. Now, once upon a time, they were gonna build a parking lot right at the end of the street where it approaches coming up to the woods back, back, back in there, back in there and get the finger. And uh, boy, the whole neighborhood came up in arms because they didn't want the traffic coming in there. And uh, so the, the parking lot never got built. But anyway, behind my mom's house, uh, there's a field or what used to be a field. It's, <laughs> it's trees now, but we used to have horses back in there. And uh, that was pretty cool. And then uh, when the horses left, we put a skateboard ramp in there, built a half pipe. And man, we, we used to shred that thing skateboarding. Uh, you know, the kids today, they got them little skate parks. I think they're just stupid and ridiculous, you know, because of all the lawsuits. But man, we had like three feet of vertical and we actually stole, I shouldn't say stole, we, we borrowed some uh, that pool coping so that you could go up and grind that axle at the top of the ramp. It was awesome. Well, I got some people coming up, so I'll continue in just a minute. So you can't really see it, but there's a field back behind those trees. And there used to be a sewer line. Uh, and I say used to be, I mean, it's still there, but they just renovated all of that as part of the uh, project here in Lynchburg. It actually went right through my mom's backyard. And of course it comes right through by the bike path here going that way. But anyway, the, the pipes used to just kind of go right across the top of the creek. And so what I would do is come out of my, the back of my house, you know, and then I would cross that creek and then walk through the field over here, over here. And then the, the other pipe was somewhere around in here. And then I would cross and get over here onto what is now bike trails. But back then this was all just virgin forest. And we got some stories about that. So there goes some mountain bikers. There's a little trail down there. That's a much easier trail, but I figured it'd be muddy. So I'm hiking up the fire trail here. You know, there goes the trail there, trail there, you know, so, you know, I couldn't mountain bike this right here, which is what I'm going up. But I swear, I, I'm not so sure, Huck, so it's story time. Okay, back in the day in the 70s, you know, we, uh, we were, it was kind of an innocent time, at least it was for us here in Lynchburg. And uh, so we were heavily into skateboarding, and I remember when Van Halen came out with their first uh, album, and the way we talked back then, it was, Dang! Dude, dude, man, get up here to the skateboard ramp. We got a new group, man. It's this group called Van Halen. You got to check this out. You know, get your ass and get your skateboard up here and let's smoke some pot and rip, man. Let's just rip. So, you know, that's what we would do. <laughs> we would smoke out of a garden hose of all things. Yeah, that was when I was 14 now, so don't, don't be judging me on that. That's why I can't stand the fact that, you know, our history follows us through the rest of our lives. I haven't touched the marijuana since I was 14 years old but anyway the story goes on so then you know remember when the ACDC's uh, singer died and we thought that was the end of ACDC and we had a we actually held a funeral right here in Lynchburg there goes a mountain bike see it's, this is a, quite a treasure back in here so I don't want to get them too much we'll continue that story in just a minute so now here's a clue for cities and towns during the uh, CCP virus uh, this would be a wonderful place to, to come. I mean, put in an obstacle course. My dad put this in uh, many years ago. Not this, this has been improved on. He had a, the original course is gone. This is all new equipment. But, uh, I'm, and I'm gonna come back and do this. I was gonna do it today, but the day got away from me. I met a young couple and got to telling stories and you're learning that I can tell stories forever. But, uh, you know, what I'm saying is it, it, in your parks, man, it'd be wonderful to put this in while the gyms are closed. Uh, and people can come out here perfectly safe. I mean, even if the virus got on that, um, it's going to die off. We've already proved that the sunlight kills it. So anyway, just a, just a clue. Anybody watching the video, put in an obstacle course for your free community. People will love it. So back before the uh, CCP virus, this would be packed. You know, this is the ball field, one of the ball fields. There'd be hundreds of people here cheering. There's a there's a soccer net over there. That soccer net would be on that field there, and there'd probably be people out there playing soccer, especially this time of the year. Reason I know this field's not being used. I used to mark these ball fields, and uh, we used to take a little uh, bucket and we would mix it up with the with the white. So you can see the line here a little bit, and you just run that line right down through there, and you can tell this field hasn't been marked in a while. There's not even footprints on here. It's, Kind of a depressing time and uh, I got one more ball field I'll show you all right so 
Oh, I got to get my shadow off. Here's Dad's plaque, right at the bottom <laughs> of a flagpole, facing away from the parking lot. I, I, I would imagine in Lynchburg that nobody has probably seen this. I'm trying to get down, keep my shadow out of the sunlight. I mean, there's more right here to the remembrance of 9-11 than there is to my father who created the park. But I guess uh, that's how I say that's how life is. At least he got a plaque. Nobody sees it, but he got it. All right. So I remember back when that was put in, and that was a beautiful place to to hang out. <laughs> I guess I'm old, man. <laughs> I don't know why they just let it go. Oh well. Here's more of the obstacle course. I had to wait for them people to get across the bridge. A lot of people here today. They're all enjoying the park, so that's cool. Here's another view of the baseball fields. Look, it's not all shut down in this democratic state. There was a girls baseball team. I didn't want to film them. They probably think I was a dirty old man or something. You know, but uh, they're meeting over here. Not a whole lot of social distance. But uh, at least people are out having fun, getting some exercise. I think that's important. So, anyway. Back there, you know, you see a little hint of normalcy before the virus. But I mean, look at this. This field would be swarming with people normally. Those soccer nets look like they haven't been used in months. Probably all summer long, beautiful day like today. On a Sunday, there'd just be, be a couple of games going here. It's just depressing. So let's finish on a positive note. There's a few people hiking in to do the Frisbee golf. And we got a couple people on the tennis courts. So there's other things to do besides soccer and I guess organized sports, baseball, softball. Although you saw a little bit of softball. All right, that's it. So I realized I didn't show you the other side of dad's flagpole. <laughs> there's not even a flag on it. Yeah. Oh, what's this? there it is right there. Let's go all the way up, no flag. But uh, this is this is his flagpole. So here's another view of the pole. <laughs> and uh, this is field one, just a little more Peaks View Park, showing you from down below in the in the bottom parking lot here. And then this this little area up here hasn't changed. Wow, in, in 50 years, I, that's where we would hide when it rained. You know, in, in the park service, it was nice because when it rained, you kind of got the day off because we would just sit in there and just just talk all day. Because uh, you can't get out with the mowers in the rain, and you don't want to be on the weed eaters in the rain. So, uh, I mean, there, there was work to do. Like, we come over to this barn right here, and we might uh, move some stuff around. Or, have, you know, they brought in a load, and we'd have to put stuff away and whatnot. But uh, just a different look at Peaks View Park, you know, with the baseball field. And coming back to Dad's Pole, I guess if you were going up that sidewalk there to get to the dugout, you might look down and see his plaque. Anyway, enough for today.